In today's video, I'm going to be discussing 468 seats and how this could result in a massive red wave or massive blue wave with the upcoming election and what this means for us as individuals as well as the country as a whole. That's the focus of this video. Let's get into it and talk through all the details. All right, the November elections are coming up quickly and before we know it, it is going to be upon us and that means this is going to be very, very important over the coming months here as the presidential candidates are hitting it hard trying to get our attention, trying to get our approval, and trying to lock in our votes for a little bit later this year. Well, lawmakers are in the same position as there's a lot of lawmaker seats that are up for vote right now for the upcoming election. In fact, you heard me to say it, 468 seats across Congress, all 435 in the House of Representatives, as well as 33 in the Senate are up for grabs. Do you think that's going to be influential? Yeah, very much so, right? So we could have a variety of different outcomes here. We could have a massive blue wave, we could have a massive red wave, or we could have a divided Congress like what we've seen here for the last couple of years. And we all know that when we have a divided Congress, a whole lot of nothing gets done, right? If you don't believe me, just look back over the last couple of years here. What have they done? Like virtually nothing, a couple pieces of legislation, a lot of delays, a lot of vacations, and a lot of excuses, right? <laughs> That's about how it happens. However, this upcoming election cycle here in a matter of just months here with November is very, very influential. And I do want to talk about what this could mean for us as individuals, us as a country as a whole, and again, what all this means and the ramifications. Now remember, 468 seats in Congress, and then again, the big seat, the presidential seat as well, right? Now obviously we have no clue what's gonna happen here with any of these. We can have some anticipations and we can come together with some assumptions, but at the end of the day, we won't know until probably a few days into November after the election. And again, we might not even know at that time if it is a very uh, contested race and a lot of the you know votes are coming in very, very close. So again, it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens here. However, uh, by the way, if you've not done so yet, make sure to subscribe down below. Totally free to do so. Big subscribe button right down below the video. Make sure to hit that. I'm here for you every single day to watch everything closely, to do all the research so you don't need to. And again, break it all down into these short videos. I've got you in any way that I can be, an advocate on your behalf. And again, just wanna do what I can for you here in this community. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Please subscribe down below. Thanks, truly do appreciate all of you here in the community. And uh, let's talk through the details further. All right, so let's quickly explain here really, really fast what would happen with a red wave. Now remember, a red wave simply means Republicans have full control of everything. The House of Representatives, the Senate, and the presidency as well, okay? So that'd be massive and um, that'd be a major shift. Now remember, right now, Republicans have a small, small margin in the House of Representatives. They just have a couple more seats than Democrats do, so therefore they have control in the House of Representatives. However, in the Senate, Democrats have a very small lead or a very small margin in the Senate as well, so therefore Democrats uh, hold control in the Senate. And then obviously the president as of now is Democratic. So it's very much a divided Congress. Okay. However, let's quickly talk about what a blue wave would be. A blue wave would simply be obviously Democrats uh, take control of the House of Representatives, take control of the Senate, and then also uh, contain or maintain control of the presidency as well. Okay. So that'd be a blue wave. Now, in the event that all of these happen or one of these situations happen, would that be in the best interest of us, the people, or the country as a whole? Realistically, when uh, when Congress is you know once uh, one sided and when the presidency is also that as in if there's a wave of either side as in one party controls everything in general that's usually not the best approach for the country and us as individuals okay because a lot of the policies a lot of the legislation is very one sided right again I'm not saying either one party or the other I'm just simply saying it's in general not the best approach okay there's a lot of good things that can come out of it don't get me wrong there's a lot of good legislation that can come out of these types of situations, but just in general, a lot of times it's best to have kind of a divided Congress, even though they don't get a whole lot done, at least they come together and they agree on something uh, ubiquitously across the lawmakers and they hey, say, hey, let's actually do this in the best interest of the people and of the country. If we get one-sided, well, then it gets to be like, well, now we're kind of you know working just in the interest of this one party, okay? 
Again, by the way, quick side note here, I'm never here to take political sides. I'm never here to persuade people. I'm never here to stir the pot or agitate people. I get it. Everybody has their own political views and that's totally fine. Again, doesn't matter, okay? I'm not here to persuade people whatsoever. I'm here to talk through the details and bring you the updates of what's actually happening and um, what this could mean for us going forward, okay? Now remember, let's quickly talk uh, really fast here. What do both of these sides represent and what do they believe in? What is important to them? Now again, I'm gonna make some blanket statements here okay this does this is not a one-size-fits-all approach but in general this is what they believe in okay again I'm not saying that every single person affiliated with these parties believes in this but in general this is kind of how it works okay so let's quickly talk about Republicans. What do they believe in? What do they want? They want uh, less regulation. They want smaller government. They want less taxes. And they want basically, um, you know, more basically economic growth, right? So they want money to stay in the pockets of businesses. They want money to stay in the pockets of individuals, you and me. And they want that money to be shuffled and basically uh, like going through the economy, right? They, they want money to go through the economy, to stimulate the economy. And they want things like this. They want business growth. Growth, right? They're very business mindset. Uh, these types of people, their growth mindset. Okay. So that's kind of, again, just a very blanket statement about Republicans, less taxes, less government, less regulation, and basically more business growth, more individual growth, more money in your pockets. So you can spend on the things that you need. Okay. Again, just a general statement. Now, Democrats, what do they want? They want bigger business, uh, sorry, bigger government. They want uh, more regulation, they want higher taxes, they want to basically tax corporations, tax individuals, and they want to do more social endeavors as well, okay? So again, this is a, blank, a blanket statement across the board on most of what Democrats want as well, okay? So what would you think do, would be the best for us as the people and basically as a country uh, as an entirety, right? Well, that's kind of everybody's own opinion here, okay? And I'm not gonna sit here and say, well, well, this one party would be the best for all of us. But let's look at the big picture here. At the end of the day, do we vote based on on, I don't know what the lawmakers are saying, or do we vote based on what their party is affiliated with? I'm not sure about you, but I said this the other day in a separate video. When we all when it all comes down to voting, do we go to the ballot box and we say, "Hey, we're going to vote based on what this person said?" Uh, probably not. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm not sure about you, but uh, if you haven't noticed yet, politicians um, they talk out of both sides of their mouth, and they tell you only what you want to hear, right? <laughs> do they actually tell you what they're going to do, or they just say, "Hey, we're maybe going to do this, and um, we're going to try to do everything we can here." Meanwhile, they're you know only appealing to a very small percentage of people, mostly their donors and things like that, right? So again, we always have to watch what they do and what they're affiliated with versus maybe what they're saying because they can say anything they want, but at the end of the day, can they really deliver? That's a good question, okay? Here's the thing. When it comes down to it, a lot of us make our decisions, and again, I can't speak for everybody, I'm simply saying, a lot of us make our decisions based on what is in it for us. What are you gonna do for us? What are you gonna do for our family? What are you gonna do for us as a community? What are you going to do for us as a country, right? That's the big picture that many of us are always asking and wondering, at the end of the day, what am I going to get out of this? What is the benefit to me, right? And again, I think we all kind of think that in, to some degree is, you know, what's in this for me? If I give you my coveted vote, um, what are you going to do for us? You know what I mean? How are you going to protect my family? How are you going to help me out financially? Uh, what are you going to do for us as a country, as a whole, so we can all thrive rather than basically doing what we've done for the last several years here, which is struggle, right? And again, that's not a slam on anybody in particular, but it kind of is at the same time, okay? <laughs> again, I'm not trying to take sides. I'm just simply saying... The deal is, let's just be real for a second. Have we all been struggling for the last couple of years here? Um, 100%, right? I'm not sure about you. I certainly can't speak for everybody, but I think as a whole, across the entire country, most people have been really, 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 really struggling financially. Massive inflation that was caused by no fault of our own bad, uh, versus bad policies. And we've been dealing with this massive inflation, even though we continue to hear that all oh, the economy is doing great and we are doing great financially. Really? If that's the case, then show me a few people that are doing okay financially and um, let's look at the big picture here and see how people are really, really doing. We should conduct a survey, okay? I think it's how it should really be. Conduct a survey of a huge percentage or a huge sample size of the population in this country and see how people are really doing financially. I think we can look at any of the reports out there 
and see how people are really doing. Uh, it's not that hard to see. We can clearly see from the reports. Why are we sitting on $1.13 trillion of credit card debt? And why does that keep going up? About $50 billion per quarter uh, of credit card debt. Why would that be happening? If we, if we were so financially free, and if we were uh, so financially gr uh, good off right now, then why would we be racking up so much credit card debt, okay? Not sure about you, but I don't just float balances on my credit cards for fun of it. I'm not sure about you, but I don't enjoy paying a 24% uh, interest rate. Not my uh, favorite thing to do, <laughs> okay? <laughs> just saying. So that's the situation that's going on right now. So anyway, this is why it's so important here. And again, remember, those 468 seats are up for grabs here, and uh, anything could happen as a result of this. So we'll have to see uh, going forward over the coming months here what happens, but this is going to be very, very influential. We've got a lot of factors in play here. Um, this rematch between the, the candidates here, Biden and Trump, again, this is going to be very, very interesting to watch this play out. We generally don't see situations like this when it comes down to presidential elections. Um, it's going to be a big one, okay? So between now and November, and even after that, is going to be very, very, very influential with uh, what comes out of all this. Anyway, I want to talk through the details really quickly. Obviously, there's way more to discuss here than just this. Um, I can come back and talk about it more in other videos. Otherwise, I'll continue to watch all the developments as they come out. So if you haven't done so yet, again, please subscribe down below. Totally free to do so. Share the video with your friends on my social media and go back and check out any of the other thousands of videos here on the channel, including the ones I've hand-selected for you down below in the description or at the top of the comment section and those that you see on your screen now. Enjoy your day. Take care. Have a good one. And I'll catch you again later in the